Microplastics are everywhere. Tiny, often microscopic fragments of plastic. They say there's almost 100,000 nano or microplastics in just Over one bottle of water. Whether it's fruits and vegetables or meat or poultry, there are a lot of plastics everywhere in the food. It seems kind of almost plastic. Salt marshes are very much like a sponge that absorbs energy, and absorbs water, and slows the, the energy and impact of coastal storms. We started to think, if there's more flooding on the marsh, and we know we have microplastics in the estuary, in the surface waters, and in the water column, then there's more opportunities for those microplastics to settle out because the flooding's increasing and the duration of flooding is increasing. For this project, we were looking at salt marsh peat, so the sediment that comprises the salt marsh, and we were monitoring for microplastic presence. So we found that plastic deposition and accretion within salt marsh sediment has increased within the last decade approximately. So there were the most microplastics found within the top two centimeters of salt marsh sediment. Over time, as we start moving away from glass bottles and everything's plastic and recycling and plastic bags and this sort of thing, um, we had an idea that we might see a pattern through that continuum of time where microplastics start to appear at a certain point and perhaps increase over time. The challenge is we, as humans, uh, figured out that plastics were really cool and so we wanted to use them, but we didn't really think what we were gonna do with them after we used them. So we get plastics and use them one time and throw away. What is the level of microplastics in Great Bay? And when they're out there, where do they go? And when they're going those places that they go, what organisms are encountering them and what's the resulting, what we call body burden. So part of what we're looking at is how many microplastics are in uh, juvenile fish that, that are here? How many microplastics end up in green crabs? How many microplastics end up in mussels and so on? That is baseline data that you need to have so that as you monitor microplastics through the years, you'll have an idea whether or not they're increasing or decreasing. I'm looking into oysters, fish, and crabs and seeing um, if there's a buildup of microplastics. You know, what I'm looking at is just where are the microplastics in Great Bay? Um, are they settling in Great Bay? And are they in the species that live in Great Bay? This work is super important because microplastics, as we're discovering, are everywhere. They're in everything, water, food, air. Um, so it'll be important to keep track of how microplastics abundance is changing in certain environments and be able to monitor its effects. The final deliverable or product of what Greg and I are doing together is going to be baseline data. We just don't know what's out there right now. And you, how can you look for a trend if you don't even know where it started? So uh, that's our goal right now. The choices that we all make when we go out and buy stuff and then throw it away, uh, actually have an impact right here, locally. Increasing awareness, um, number one, as a starting point, um, addressing public concerns, and, and sort of heightening people's understanding of where plastic waste goes and why there's a reason to maybe change the way we, we handle uh, plastic waste in general.